Hello again YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we're heading out to a uh, brake job on I believe a 2003 Toyota Corolla. A little bit of uh, scraping and metal to metal noise in the front end. And just a little note to all you viewers out there, if you hear noises coming out of your car, any noises, go see a mechanic, find out what the noises are. Because when you're grinding things down to nothing, it's going to get expensive. Let's see what I'm getting myself into with this one. Uh, we see a little bit of rotor gouging in there. Let's see, we've got 193,433 on the clock, 61 degrees. I know I don't usually emphasize this anywhere near enough. Here is a hood prop. I don't know if I can even get you in here. Alright. What we want to check is this right here. And that level is pretty good. We're down here. The minimum line's down here. Max is up here. Fluid's nice and clear, which I like. That's good. We don't need to do any adjustments on this, but we do need to keep an eye on this when we push the pistons back. And we do not need to crack the cap like you hear everybody say in the videos because there is a built-in vent. 
Make sure to set the parking brake before jacking the vehicle up. And another little tidbit that I'm going to cover for you guys that I've had a couple questions about. In jacking the car up, you got these pinch welds right here. You got this little mark here, this little mark here. Your scissor jack goes right here for when you're going to jack your vehicle up. When you're ve jacking the vehicle up to do maintenance or repair work on the vehicle, you do not, can I emphasize this, you do not jack it up by this point. You will crush your rocker panels, especially if you live in the salt belt. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this bolt right here. That ties your suspension in. That is going to be a very strong point on the suspension. It bolts right into the body of the car. We're going to jack it up by that point. Jack's 20, 25 year old craftsman. We're going to see 951043, I believe, is the part number. Uh, you know, 9501 something something, it's missing. I got to get a rebuild kit for it. It's getting a little lazy. It's supposed to be a two stage and it only works one stage now. But we're going to get the tire about two, three inches off the ground. Take a jack stand and put this underneath the car. Now as far as getting the jack stand underneath the car, get your suspension, your subframe, we're going to set this right underneath the subframe, right there, and then we're going to lower the car back down on it. So, unless I need the jack for some other purpose, it's pretty much going to stay in there for extra support in the meantime. Now we got to get these lug nuts that have already loosened up off the car. Okay, something you guys have probably never seen me do on this channel before is we're going to cover something I don't normally cover gloves don't want to get my hands all nasty we're going to be dealing with brake cleaner we're going to be dealing with brake dust brake dust is really hard to get out of the pores of your hands so we're going to be using gloves and because we're probably going to be using some power tools we have safety goggles I almost put my eye out a year ago gotta learn gotta get used to this and of course our trusty mechanics cloth and then we take this just so we're all official just like that recommend putting the tire underneath the car for extra safety. A uh, little metal, metal to metal. Yeah, there's no brake pad left in there. Yeah, 
there's nothing, nothing left of this. Yeah, nothing down in here. Take the two caliper pin bolts out. And if they're in there too hard to move, double wrench method. Makes it really, really easy. But I've got the tools to make the job faster. clamp back that all the way off once you've got it far enough to get over the caliper get hooked to the back side of it you can go on top of the screw that holds the brake line if you want or basically anywhere you can get a flat edge and just tighten it up just enough but you'll see the separation between your brake pad and your caliper and at the same time it'll help you to evaluate if you got a problem and I can guarantee you we got a problem this thing is being very 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 stiff but the idea here is just to back it off enough that you can separate it from the, the bracket and the rotor oh, crusty and wet okay we may have a brake problem here Everything's all wet, so we're going to go get the uh, pet trainer, get that underneath here, and we're going to start cleaning this all down, and we're going to look for some leaks. Pet training pads can save you an awful lot of aggravation and cleanup. Just grab a pet training pad. These are 30-inch uh, 30 30 by 36-inch. And we're just set this down underneath the work area. C clamp. Hold it down. Wrench back there, hold it down. Wrench up here to hold it down. We'll start putting some stuff down in our work area to keep it in place. Alright. Now we'll get down here and see if we can get that cleaned up a bit pushing it back in. Right, we're going to come in here with our Lyle dual piston retraction tool and use these on singles as well as doubles. You just set them off center instead of in the middle and then squeeze the handle and it'll Park against the, the piston and you can start pushing the piston back in. If you run into a problem where you have to put excessive amounts of pressure on the piston to push it back in, then chances are there's probably rust around the piston or the bore that's preventing you from pushing it back in. And in this case, I'm squeezing this tool really hard and I don't really seem to be getting any uh, 
Well, I'm actually bending the tool a little bit. This piston's not going back in. So, we're going to show you something a little bit different today. And by the way, I'm giving one of these away pretty soon. We're at 700 subscribers, and when we hit 1,000, somebody in the continental United States is going to get one of these for free. Look in my previous videos for the uh, video where I introduced this tool and uh, make the number one most popular comment. And when I hit 1,000 subscribers, that'll be screen captured and you'll be awarded one of these tools. Okay, what we're going to do now, we push the piston all the way out to the point where it moves around nice and easily. We haven't lost any fluid yet, which is a good thing, it means there's no hole in the boot. We're going to take a pair of needle nose pliers with some rubber hose on the end of it to protect it. And we're going to lightly squeeze down on the brake hose so that we can plug it off. You want to squeeze it hard enough to squeeze off the fluid, but not hard enough to damage the hose. And then we've got a 14 millimeter wrench on the screw that holds the brake line on. And everything makes a hammer. That's to knock it loose. Take the screw the bolt out. Be careful not to lose the copper washers. The copper washer did not come off with the bolt, which means it's still attached to the back side of the caliper. Okay, in this case it's not a copper washer, it's a tin washer. And it is present. Give that a little spritz with brake cleaner just to clean it off. If we're going to be reusing that. I'm not going to disturb those washers. I'm just going to leave them right there. We don't have new ones to put on. So, all right. Now, let's get to oh brake fluid. That's why all the brake fluid in there is clean. It's because it's been replenished regularly. And I have to go mop this up. We have an old mechanics cloth. Or your sister's shirt, or you know, whatever you got laying around. Actually, kidding, I wouldn't really recommend using your sister's shirt. I might, but you shouldn't. All right, now, all of this that's going to get on the pet trainer will not soak through it. So, what we're going to do now, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to, oh, look at all that rust. That right there is why our piston was being a stinker and not wanting to go in. So, first thing you want to do is get this as cleaned up as you can get it. Now, this right here warrants replacing the caliper because there's no way I'm going to be able to clean this up enough to keep it from leaking during normal use.
parts, replacing the piston caliper. We're replacing. Pet training pads. I save you a lot of aggravation.